Hello and welcome to Exploring Axon, a podcast where we discuss Axon and its ecosystem. I am your host and Axonic developer advocate, Sarah Tori. So I joined the team at Axonic not too long ago, and as I'm going through my onboarding process, I'm coming across lots of fantastic and exciting new tools and technologies. And since I love to talk to people, I figured why not record my findings and share them with you. And maybe I can inspire you to learn something along the way with me on topics like domain-driven design, event sourcing, Axon framework and its server, and a lot more. So let's dive right into it. My guest today is the founder and CTO of Axonic, Allart Bowser, or as he's affectionately known amongst all of us as the Axon guy. Hey, Allart. Hey, Sarah. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining me this fine evening after the kids are in bed. <laughs> we can have an uninterrupted yeah. conversation. <laughs> nice quiet time. Adult time. Adult right? time. Exactly. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, um, I want to know more about you, um, about your background. Um, what did you do before Axon? Yeah, so how, how far back do you want me to go? Uh, I, I can start uh, I can start at the age of six. That's where things start to get relevant. Uh, okay. Don't worry, yeah, there, there will be gaps in the, in the history. But uh, no, at the age of six, I got infected with the uh, computing uh, or the programming virus uh, when my parents uh, bought me my first uh, uh, Commodore 64. Nice. And uh, not long thereafter, I started writing my first code. And uh, that sort of became a hobby throughout uh, school. Uh, of course, that was more important than school itself. Of course. And uh, but yeah, it was only a hobby. So when I um, uh, graduated, I, I went to uh, to university to study aerospace engineering wow. uh, because uh, airplanes are pretty cool, mm -hmm. and uh, programming was a hobby, um, and I want to keep it wanted to keep it that way mm -hmm. until I found out that aerospace engineering is not as much about aircraft. Uh, as I thought, yeah. and I decided, why am I doing this crazy stuff? Why not just make my hobby my work? Mm -hmm. uh, so then I uh, started programming 24-7. Um, and I started my uh, career at, uh, at Accenture. Had a couple of uh, really nice years there. And then through my connections at, uh, at SpringSource, I joined a company called JTeam. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's where I joined as a, uh, a software architect and really got into the, uh, yeah, the pretty, pretty interesting projects that we did there. Nice. And uh, that's where I basically started uh, experimenting with different architectural styles. I was already a fan of uh, DDD and started to, to explore that more. I even went to, together with a colleague, we flew to New York to do a training with Eric Evans. That was for wow. really awesome, but extremely tiring days. Um, so around what year would, are we talking about here? That is 2008 okay. that I did that, oh. uh, that training. Okay. And that really inspired me to, uh, to apply that more in, uh, in projects. Mm -hmm. And um, I, was, I was already noticing that the, the projects I was doing, they were suffering from uh, accidental complexity, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. So they they became um, more, the, the software was more complex than the actual domain that you're building it for, which is, uh, which is not a, a right thing to do. So I started exploring um, other ways of doing that. And that's where I came across what is now no, uh, known as CQRS. Um, came across a video from uh, Greg Young in uh, early 2009. Um, and, um, that's, um, yeah, that, that basically started an experiment that is nowadays called Axon, uh, which is basically around, uh, CQRS and, uh, and event sourcing. Awesome. And then, um, I know Axon didn't come about overnight, so it was, it was a rather long process before you, uh, basically created this fantastic framework. So how did you start and what kind of problem were you trying to solve? Yeah, so it, it really started in uh, in in, in two thousand and nine, two thousand and yeah, late two thousand nine, I guess is when uh, when it started, and it really started as an experiment, right? To to find out how do we apply CQRS, and and the way we did experiments back then at uh, at J Team was by um, by writing a blog, by writing some code that you then post on uh, on Google Code at the time. 
uh, in, in SVN, which was pretty hip. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and you write a blog about it. And, uh, and, and you, uh, we organized meetups uh, every, uh, every month, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even more often than that. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we did some talks to share knowledge uh, about, uh, about those findings. And um, that, that code on GitHub started to live its own life. And it was not called Axon yet at yeah. that point. Um, and uh, I noticed after a couple of, of weeks that, hey, this is, this is substantial stuff, right? I'm not just doing an experiment. I'm, I have to write a whole lot of plumbing code to just get this experiment uh, going. Um, so I, um, I, I wrote this uh, separate library or se separate repository where I started writing all this plumbing code that, uh, that was independent of the actual sort of demo application that I was building. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you have to give that repository a name. Um, and that's where the trouble starts. Right? That's, uh, that's <laughs> the biggest issue in, uh, in, in any programming <laughs> is that you create a class and what, what's the name of that yeah. class? Well, in this case, it starts with a repository. So we did a little um, um, competition in the, in the company. I said, whoever comes up with the coolest name for this, uh, this library uh, gets a bottle of, um, uh, what was it, Prosecco or something like that, probably. <laughs> and uh, so we had this competition and some, uh, everybody joined in. And ultimately, we set on the name, uh, on the name Axon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the person who came up with, uh, with that name, I gave him the, the bottle and he gave it back and he said, well, I don't like Prosecco anyway. So, <laughs> uh, so we, we drank it uh, in, the, in the team, all, all of us. Uh, and, that was, uh, and this was in uh, 2010. So the first commit in Axon was in, uh, in, in uh, uh, the one in GitHub was in March 2010. It did start a bit earlier than that, uh, probably somewhere in January. but. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's a little over ten years ago. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. But the company Axon didn't start until what, like a few years ago. Yeah, Axonic is actually yesterday we turned uh, three. we turned three years old. Yay! Happy birthday! Yeah, so uh, we had a little birthday uh, uh, yesterday, and um, the um, yeah, so we, it started in two thousand and seventeen because we well in in the beginning we we had zero downloads right mm -hmm. there was a few interested yeah. uh, and then uh, you get 10 or 100 and uh, after a few years it, it went up to uh to about five six thousand but in 2017 it, there was this massive uplift uh, we really noticed that the the number of downloads in in 2017 went up from five thousand in the beginning to over thirty thousand at the end of the year and what do you think the reason was do you think it was because people were getting more interested in domain-driven design and event sourcing or was it's it's mainly that um but the the interested the interest was sparked by uh the rise of um of microservices mainly mm -hmm. and uh event-driven microservices specifically and that that whole journey started in 2014 um but of course it takes a while before the the big crowd uh, tags on and um they um um, yeah, then, then a lot of people found us because they, they looked for, okay, how do you do event sourcing uh, in, in Java? And then uh, they found Axon, and that's how the, the downloads came. And of course, I was, uh, by, by then already, I was uh, tricked into doing uh, public speeches by, uh, by a colleague, actually the same colleague who uh, joined me in, uh, in New York for the DDD training. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said, well, let's do, just do a co, uh, co talk, uh, together. And well, we did that, uh, and I, I started enjoying that as well. So yeah, when you build this framework and you want to share knowledge, that's a great way to travel the planet yeah. that was allowed back then. <laughs> and, um, you could, um, yeah, I mean, you, you visit great places. You, I went to, to customers and, uh, and that was also part of why we, we set to, to create Axonic because we just noticed. There's this growing interest, and um, already in 2017, half of the revenue that we had in our in our division was uh, uh, projects uh, using Axon. Right, so Axon mm -hmm. was was good for half of the revenue in the in the in the company as services, uh, yeah. consultancy, if you will. So we noticed that there was uh, a lot of demand for um, not only consultancy, but more importantly. Um, training as well as extra products. So what's now Axon Server, 
we we noticed that demand in 2017. Uh, so we uh, we decided to uh, to to separate out as a as a company, which is uh, not mm -hmm. quite uncommon for uh, for J Team. Uh, in the yeah. past, uh, J Team uh, was uh, part or was uh, involved in the uh, creation of Spring Source as well, or Interface right. 21 as it was called, was called back then. Uh, but also Elastic uh, originated from uh, from J Team. Nice. Um, so those are um, so th we were used to doing that. So we we uh, spun out another company branched called Exonic. Yeah. We focus on Exxon. Yeah. We just branched out and uh, we live our own life now. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. That's really cool. So um, you talked about um, Java. So um, obviously Exxon mm -hmm. is written in Java, but um, is it only used? Um, in, in Java, or can developers that use other languages can use it as well? Yeah, so that's it, it, there. We have to really split the uh, let's say the framework and the the server. Uh, the server part that we started building. So the the framework is really a framework that uh, runs on the JVM. So yeah, strictly speaking, you can use it with <laughs> other languages as long as the languages run on JVM. Um, but the, with, with the server, we, we do have a vision. Of course, microservices are, one of the powers of microservices is, is the fact that you can choose any language for a component where you feel it's, it is mm -hmm. the best fit, right? Some languages are better expressing one thing and other languages are better expressing and expressing right. other things. And um, I mean, that's in, in normal languages, that's the case. And it's in programming languages, that's mm -hmm. definitely the case. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the, the vision really is that Axon server is independent of the actual language and it's independent of Axon framework, if you will, but they just work together very nicely mm -hmm. because of course they are based on the very same uh, architectural principles like, uh, like explicit messaging, using commands, events, and queries, but then which application generates those commands and events and queries, we don't really care from, a, from an Axon server perspective. So we, we do, we will have in the in the future uh, support for other languages. Whether we're going to build an entire framework for those languages, <laughs> well, let's say it depends. Right? Awesome. So, um, how about Spring? Because I've noticed the uh, in the the framework itself, there's a lot of uh, usage of Spring framework as well. So, what's what's the relationship between the two? And can you use the framework without Spring? Yeah, so the the framework itself does not depend in any way on on Spring, but as you might have noticed in the introduction uh, about myself, there is a, a pretty deep relationship with uh, with Spring, um, mm -hmm. and uh, at some point, um, uh, yeah, I decided that you know, Spring is a wonderful framework, and it really helps, especially Spring Boot. It really helps you get up to speed very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I wanted Axon to uh, to make use of that as much as possible, but in in a way where uh, Axon does not depend on Spring, but you can actually use it to your benefit. So you can actually mm -hmm. use the power of Spring to uh, to very quickly build these uh, these services. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the the there is a specific uh, Spring uh, module in Axon that gives you basically all the the building blocks uh, in a in a spring way, so that you can uh, there, the, it includes auto configuration. Uh, so basically, if you have Spring Boot and you uh, you include the Axon auto configuration uh, dependency or the the Spring Boot starter for for Axon, yeah, then it will detect all these these aggregates for you and it will generate all the plumbing around it for you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. since that's so convenient, that's why you see that all the time, right? Yeah. Both in, yeah. in, in our own demos, of course, but also in, uh, in, in clients. Uh, but if you, um, in, in Axon, and especially in Axon 4, we, we spent a lot of uh, time um, getting it um, nice, mm -hmm. is the what we call the configuration API. And it is a very vanilla way to, uh, to mm -hmm. get started. So, Basically, we are not tied to any application framework, but yeah. it is just very convenient. It just uh, makes your life a little bit easier. And, and actually, there's a nice story about the Spring Boot Starter. Yeah. Because at some point, um, uh, Josh Long wanted to do a little webinar with me. And uh, while preparing that webinar, uh, he said, OK, let's, let's do some live coding. And this was in Axon uh, 2 or maybe 3 early days. But And I said, yeah, but if we do live coding, we have to do all the plumbing, right? We have to to set up the event store and, and do everything. And he said, why? 
I said, well, there's a lot of components that you need. He said, but let's build a starter for that. So we opened up our IDE and while he was in, in uh, he was at home and, and so was I, uh, well, that is not really close. So we did a pair programming session uh, over uh, probably uh, meet or hangouts or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, and we we just together we built that uh, that very first version of the uh, Spring Boot uh, auto configuration uh, module. Uh, so um, yeah, he he made me put his name on some some classes as uh, as the author. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. So uh, so if you hear this, Josh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Thanks for that little push. We needed it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So um, we talked about framework um, a little bit in my, um, I think, the uh, very first few days where I started at Axonic, and um, there was a lot of mentions about um, applications that use uh, a lot of computing, um, just like things that have to do with um, numbers you know like being an accountant because a lot of the you know the microservices kind the of financials, IT yeah. comes from that finances and banking and things like that um but then we do other examples when we do trainings like you know gift cards and hotel reservations and things like that um could you give me some other examples of what axon framework can be used for other businesses like something that maybe doesn't have so much to do with financing yeah, so that that's an interesting uh, uh, thing because if, if you go back in, in in time to the very beginning, right? And if you ask me, okay, what kind of use case is this for? I would say, well, this is a a framework that addresses an issue that exists in a very niche part, mm -hmm. right? It is a, it is a so yeah, financials. Period. Yeah. Right. End end of story. Mm -hmm. That's what I would have said. But throughout the years, I came across some amazing. Uh, applications where I literally never expected Axon or event sourcing for that matter in, in general to be suitable. And actually it starts with the very first known project using Axon in production. And it was used in, so I was not the first to deploy Axon in production. All right. Um, and uh, so, uh, to uh, some uh, some French, a small French startup uh, now um, uh, it, it has been acquired by a very large uh, medical uh, mm -hmm. company. But they were a medical startup, and they built software that tracked the tools used in dental surgery. Huh. And they used okay. Axon for that, um, or or they used the experiment that was later called Axon to mm. be precise. Yeah. Um, and as far as I know, nobody died, but the, um, or nobody died because of a bug in Axon at least. So th that was the first one. And, um, and then we, we, we got, um, I, I remember doing some consultancy at a, uh, a company in, um, uh, in Seattle, Washington that, uh, did, um, uh, customs, uh, declarations for, uh, for their, uh, expedition, uh, right. For, for, um, freight. Yeah. And they, they needed to track everything that happened uh, to those uh, customs forms so mm -hmm. they could track all the changes. And, uh, and they say, well, uh, these, uh, these truck drivers, or, uh, in some cases, uh, ships, when they arrive, they need to pass in, uh, all the, all these customs declarations and, and very often digital but sometimes also physical and they never have it, right? Yeah. So it's never up to date and there's always something missing. So they wanted to have that in a digital way, but they also wanted to trace exactly what happened to these registrations and when data was added, when was it added by whom, et cetera. Uh, so that was definitely an example I wouldn't think of. And another one that I think is particularly cool is um, in Europe, there is a region of airspace that is being controlled by an Axon-based application. Okay. All right. Um, it's probably not under heavy load at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but um, basically what they do is they it? gather all sorts of data uh -huh. uh, from, from different radar systems uh -huh. and, and, and ground systems, and they combine everything and then give the uh, air traffic control a, a global view of, of the current uh, state. And they use event sourcing for that, so they know uh, exactly which decisions are how how the data has been uh, manipulated uh, in in the past and uh, to uh, to learn from that and have have a trace um, and yeah if you would ask me uh, is it is it useful for air traffic control I would have definitely said no <laughs> but it makes perfect sense that's really fascinating um, 
Yeah, so there's and there's loads of these uh, these stories uh, that that pop up every now and then, and it's uh, and, you even and that's the, the really it. cool. Yeah, that, that's a really cool part of uh, open source software, right? You don't people can just grab it; they can take it and do whatever cool stuff they they want, and uh, and it's that just that is already an amazing uh, amazing to see, and just knowing that you're basically part of so many systems in uh, out in the world. That's uh, that's amazing. And I think you had one about like a small bakery that used Axon as well, which was which was pretty fascinating when they were tracking their orders and so forth. So that was that was neat, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, there's those, and uh, th that reminded uh, me of an um, uh, a small uh, regional application. There's this uh, regional not-for-profit organization mm -hmm. in uh, in northern Italy that uses uh, that created a recipe system. So I got these questions on the mailing list and like, okay, for recipes and like, what, wh why, what are you creating a recipe book or something? I don't know. But, yeah. and uh, so I asked them, you know, Hey, what, what just curiosity, what, what are you building? And it's, uh, well, we, we track recipes, but for, um, let's say home bakeries as mm -hmm. well, or, or, um, um, anyone who creates something at home and by registering the, the recipes and defining how, how you use these, uh, these ingredients by registering the ingredients, mm. they give you the nutritional values because by law, you have to put the nutritional values yes. on the, on your labels, yes. but how the hell do you know those? I know so those. they use this application to track and because, well, when you, when you're experimenting, you're like, okay, let's put an extra tomato in there. Well, what's the effect of an extra tomato, right? Uh, okay. Well, if you, um, and then you want to go back in time and say, okay, well, how does that compare to my previous recipe? Is mm -hmm. this one healthier than the previous one, et cetera? So, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's, really that, cool. that's not a use case for that I could anticipate as a useful use case for Axon. That's really cool. I wish I'd known that. I had this um, little small bakery that I ran out of my little apartment in, in Northern California years ago. And uh, they did have that requirement by law. You had to put the nutritional value on, on the packages. And that was one of those things. That I was like, how am I going to get this going? And, you know, back then you had to send it to, uh, gosh, I can't remember if it was like a health department or a branch of the health department where um, they actually helped you with the nutritional value. But yeah, this, this would have been so much easier to use. It would have made my life so much easier. <laughs> Hey, you just had to move to Northern Italy then, I guess, uh, to, uh, to get it done. Right? Exactly. Hey, that would be my next move. I, I don't. I don't think so. I just. I just had a big move. I think I want to stay for a while. You're gonna stay put for a little while. I'm gonna stay put for a little while. <laughs> I, I've decided my moves are gonna be like 19 years apart. I did one 19 year session in one country, another in another country. Now this would be my third one. So we'll, we'll see what we can do here in Germany. Awesome. So. Um, any other I'm, I'm i'm just so fascinated by axon in general and um you know the, the use cases that you 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 told me are just really cool and you know of course you guys mentioned open source uh, just brings this whole um sort of fields for everybody to experiment and and use it and just it's really really cool um yeah, so I guess I guess it's not just for large companies and enterprises. You can use it for for anything. And yeah, even... yeah, there's a, there's a lot of large large financial institutions like banks, and yeah. we see it a lot in uh, in in, um, in pension and insurance and yeah, that kind of, of stuff. Um, and uh, of course, they all have their um, their fascinating aspects, but mm -hmm. those are the ones that where I, I expect it to be useful, right? Because they have very clear auditing requirements. Yeah, sure. But what I was really surprised to see is how many organizations realize the value of not just using events, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a substantial difference between event sourcing and event streaming. Right. Event streaming being very popular uh, at the moment, but event sourcing, I would say, is like the a notch up from from event streaming mm -hmm. and and it, it is where you you make sure that the the data you gather is 100 percent correct mm -hmm. right is 100 percent reliable and and i know that is 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 important when uh when you're uh when you've got auditing requirements right where yeah. there's a a uh, an agency or whatever that can check you every time uh randomly or and and you need to be able to show 
uh, how you've made your decisions. Mm -hmm. But that is not always the case. And I, I find more and more use cases where that is clearly not the case, but organizations do it because they see the value of those events. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, they want to be able to use the events in the future, but you can only really do that when you, when you have this guarantee that they're correct, right? Yeah. If you, well, if you store garbage for a while, it's going to smell. <laughs> So you want to make sure it's 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 correct and it's it's the the proper um, uh, data that you're storing, and it, it really becomes a source of truth from which you can gather a lot of uh, a lot of information, mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, it's it's amazing to see how more and more uh, different types of organizations are uh, are realizing that, and uh, and find well find Axon to to help them. Uh, do that in a very easy way, right? We want to make that event sourcing as, as easy as, as it can possibly be mm -hmm. so that anybody can use it. There's no, uh, no excuse anymore saying event sourcing is too complex. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's a scalable, which is nice because you can, you can start with whatever size application you want and just scale it from there. It just makes it that much easier. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the that's the, uh, the the explicit messaging part, and that's that's important that you touch that because the when when we think about event sourcing or an event driven architecture in in general, we 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 talk about events, right. uh, events left, events right, events yeah. everywhere. Um, but the thing we forget, and that is so important, um, is it is not just about events. Mm -hmm. right? An event driven architecture is it is actually not driven by events. It is driven by messages of which events take a special, uh, a special place. But they, we always say the commands and the queries are just as important. Exactly. Um, and, um, and, but, but still in Axon, these are explicit messages that you send and what you get, uh, what you get, uh, in return for using those explicit messages is what we like to call location transparency, which mm -hmm. means it doesn't matter how your uh, components, I like to call them components, how they're organized. Are they organized in a single monolith that you deploy as a, you know, a, a, do you do a bi-yearly deployment of, of your monolith? <laughs> the giant That's thing, great, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> let's, let's deploy the giant, it's that time of year again. <laughs> or, or do you have these really small independently deployed components and you, you've got your microservices? And it, it doesn't matter. For Axon, it will um, especially together with Axon Server, it will just magically, quote unquote, yeah. uh, route it to the correct destinations. And there's no, there's no thinking about it anymore. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it, it should just work. And that's the, uh, that's the, I would say the power of this location uh, transparency that we mm -hmm. uh, uh, really focus on. Yeah. And I really and want to, really yeah. Important. And I really want to delve into some of the details, but um, I think I'll, 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 I'll leave it for the next session so that we can, we can touch some of the more um, uh, detailed, really neat part of the parts of the framework um, a little bit more. But um, so you briefly touched on Axon Server. I'm kind of curious to know why you started that and what can we use it? It's independent of a language, which is which is fantastic, which means a lot of other people can use it as well. So can you kind of walk me through the server itself? Yeah, so the why we started it, that, that journey basically started uh, at the birth of Axonic, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we, um, we were asking users of Axon, like, hey, why, why are you using Axon? Uh, what, is your, uh, what was your main reason to choose mm -hmm. it? And, and what are you missing, right? What are you looking for that you can currently not find in Axon? And the, uh, well, why are you using it? We talked about that. You know, these, these mm -hmm. different array of use cases that we've, uh, we've seen but almost all of these use cases were primary systems, right? They were systems essential to the business. Um, and then the question, what are you missing? Well, people were missing two things. Uh, one is an event store that would keep performing, even if you add, uh, if you store a lot of data. So mm -hmm. Axon Framework comes with an embedded event store, as we call it. Yeah. And it allows you to store information in a relation or events in a relational database or in, in Mongo. We have a Mongo uh, implementation as well. Mm -hmm. But a relational database is not particularly good at append-only data, right? It will slow down. When tables grow larger, okay. it slows down. Mm -hmm. But if you're a startup and, and you're, you're growing, you don't want things to slow down. You want them to speed up. 
Uh, so some of our early uh, early users spent uh, an enormous amount of effort in optimizing the database to just make it work. Mm -hmm. So that was one issue, and and the other issue was the the messaging part. Right. The um, so there was a distributed command bus that would use um, uh, Spring Cloud Discovery or uh, or J Groups. We had a J Groups implementation as mm -hmm. well. And then you could dynamically distribute uh, commands, and that worked great, uh, except that JGroups in some cloud environments is really hard to configure. Uh, when you use Spring Cloud Discovery, it has some challenges with the, the discovery mechanism underneath that can take uh, a couple of seconds and uh, even up to a minute sometimes to discover wow. new nodes joining, right? Yeah. So, and it, and it was a lot of configuration hell, I would say, right? You had to make sure everything connected, right? The ankle bone connected to the leg bone, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And you had to connect everything yourself. Mm -hmm. So that was that was tricky. And and these organizations said, well, this is not primary to the system, right? This is not core to the system. It it is a requirement. It is an unfunctional. But if you have something for that, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when we set out to to uh, to build Axon Server. Um, so when we spun out the uh, the company, Axon Server was going to be the uh, the flagship uh, product. Uh, we launched it in uh, in 2018, mm -hmm. and um, the the uh, there's an open source version, uh, which is um, um, which was my say, next commercial question. open source yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, version. But at yeah. least the the source code is visible. It's not completely free as in free speech sure. but at least it's free to use and you can you can check the source it. code yeah. and the main reason for that is we don't want any form of vendor lock-in we don't mm -hmm. want you to become a customer and then stay as a customer because you can't get rid of us yeah. but we want you to stay as a customer because you don't want to get rid of us exactly um so there's a lock-in but it's a soft lock-in we just hug you <laughs> um and um the the um, so that's why it's it's open source, and then there's the enterprise version, which is uh, closed source, and we have subscriptions, and yeah. uh, where you uh, you're entitled to to use that one. But even with this uh, open source that uh, we have, both of the framework and the server, we um, I've noticed that a lot of the developers are really involved in the community. So if um, users are having problems, asking questions, and things like that, we're very much involved with the community. So it's it's one of those perks that I really like about Axon because you have that community. We have a Google group where people ask questions and they get answers and it's pretty neat to see that. So that's one of the things I really, really like about our uh, community as well. Awesome. Well, uh, I think uh, this is a good place to, to sort of wrap it up for, for today. I do have a million other questions to ask. But <laughs> I, I was afraid you did. <laughs> I think I will. Uh, I will kind of uh, uh, put them in, in in little smaller sections to tackle. So maybe next time I can uh, delve a little bit more into uh, depth with uh, event sourcing itself and uh, messaging and uh, uh, little more specific parts of the framework. But I really appreciate it. Sure. This was really great. I I love knowing backstories and sort of uh, finding out how it all came about because I think it's important to know the history when you're using a uh, whatever product you're using. I, I care about the human side of it. I think it's really cool. So All thank right. you for your Sounds time. Sounds good. Awesome. Yeah, thank you Talk too. Talk to you later. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening and please join me next time as I explore the specifics of the Axon framework. Until then, have a great time and happy coding.